All right, I'm going to get started. Um, thank you everyone for joining us this afternoon. My name is Elena DeLacy. I am a member of the CAVI Regional Water Management. And um, today we will be joined by the other members of the RWMG, which include uh, Tracy Eden Bishop, uh, Kyle Erickson, Mesa King, Heather Knudsen, Izzy Martin, and Ashley Overhouse. Um, we're also joined on this meeting today by Jason Muir with NV5 Consulting, and he is the consultant that has been um, assisting us with this latest plan update. Um, if members of the public and stakeholder group members can please um, introduce yourself by typing your name and your organization or agency you represent, if there is one, um, please do that by uh, typing it into the chat chat bar using the chat function. Um, that way we can kind of move this meeting along a little bit quick, more quickly um, than doing um, verbal introductions. Um, you'll notice you also are all muted. Um, we will um, unmute folks who, when it, when it comes time to do public comment, uh, we will unmute you so that you may speak and we'll have um, we'll have more information about that in a few slides. It looks like we have some artwork going on <laughs> on the shared screen. I'm not sure about that. Can, it, can anybody, does everybody see that the yellow marks or is that just me? Okay. Yeah, it's, it's okay, we'll just try to try to move past it. I'm not able to advance my slides here. There we go. Um, so just to kind of reiterate what the CABI Integrated Regional Water Management Group purpose is, um, this is this is essentially our purpose. Um, so back in 2002, the Regional Water Management Planning Act was passed by the legislature um, shortly thereafter, the Kasumnas American Bear Yuba Integrated Regional Water Management Group was formed, and it is a stakeholder-driven collaboration. Um, our philosophy acknowledges that organizations may have to pursue their own interests that may not be on behalf of CABI while also part while participating in CABI's earwim. So basically, um, just because we don't all agree on things all of the time doesn't mean that we can't work together to in good faith to um, implement this management plan. Um, also, just another note, the plan is not a legally binding document. It's simply a regional compact with commitments. Um, and so once an organization or agency endorses the EARWIMP, um, that endorsement comes with responsibilities to participate in implementing the plan. Um, but uh, you know, there's also this knowledge that the plan does get updated continuously, um, um, you know, throughout time as standards change. Um, this is our agenda today. Um, so we've called the meeting to order. Um, I've confirmed that we have a quorum. We have our seven um, regional water management group members here. We have an opening on the RWMG. Um, which we'll discuss at a later meeting. Um, but today, our, our first order of business and really our focus is to present the CABI Airwimp plan, um, our, our update for 2021. And we will also receive public comment on the plan. We'll close public comment. Following that public comment period, the RWMG will have a discussion and action. And those potential actions are outlined um, on the on the agenda, basically, our, our options are to adopt the plan as presented, we can either amend the plan, we can reject the plan, and if we do decide to adopt the plan, we will direct the adopted plan to be sent to Department of Water Resources for their review and eventual approval. We will then adjourn the meeting. So this is just also, so everybody knows, this is part of the mandated process for completing the updated CABI earwimp. So we've published notice and of our intent to adopt the plan 
in accordance with section 6066 of the government code. And this public meeting is the, um, that. So just to kind of go back, take you back in time a little bit, um, the plan update, really um, the, the reason why we, we have have to up update the plan is to bring it into compliance with 2016 Department of Water Resources requirements um, related to Proposition 1. So our last plan update happened, I think it was approved in 2014 um, using the 2012 DWR standards. So we updated all these sections listed here, region description, plan objectives, resource management strategies. We added three new strategies, including sediment management, outreach and engagement, and water and culture. Um, we also um, had a project review process update um, to that chapter. We also updated plan performance and monitoring, local water planning, local land use planning, stakeholder involvement, and climate change. And it's important to note that most of these updates were made prior to gosh, I think last May, May of 2020. Um, and we had a, a public meeting um, or a stakeholder group meeting rather um, in May um, of last year in which we presented uh, the most of these substantive updates and uh, you know received comments at that time as well. So we've incorporated those comments from the first meeting with the stakeholder group. We have um, made some additional updates um, which are outlined here on this slide um, since last May. So we've, we've modified and updated the governance chapter, which is chapter four of the plan. Um, so now, um, because the, the CABI Joint Powers Authority, the JPA was formed with a primary purpose to the plan, we are nearing that um, that completion of that, that goal. So the JPA will be coming to a close. So we need to update the governance chapter to reflect that. So we are referring to individual water agency members rather than to the Joint Powers Authority and the memorandum of agreement, the MOA and the resolution of support were updated pursuant to changes in chapter four. So the MOA is an agreement between the regional water management group members, this body that is meeting today and the resolution of support is a document that is um, essentially um, uh, adopted by any stakeholder groups, agencies, um, members of, of the public um, who want to support and adopt the CABI Irwin plan. Um, and as a stakeholder group member, you also have um, Stakeholder group members also are a part of the um, uh, process, the governance process of CABI. So, so they're involved in um, helping not to make decisions, but also but to recommend make recommendations to the RWMG. The stakeholder group also um, nominates members to sit. Sorry, they nominate non-water agency members to serve on the RWMG. And there's more details about that, obviously, in the chapter. Um, chapter 12, and Jason may want to speak up to, you know, um, speak to the, the details that were updated in Chapter 12. But basically, Chapter 12 was updated to refine project listing and project selection procedures. Um, it's important to note that um, for today's meeting, um, the project list, we, we are aware that there's many comments to specific projects on, on the list. The, the list has been updated several times in the last few years uh, to include new projects um, and update or remove ones that were no longer relevant or current. Um, but plan adoption, it's very important to note this, plan adoption is not contingent on project list approval. The CABI stakeholder group and the RWMG will discuss including or excluding new and existing projects at a future meeting, a date that is to be determined still. The project list is a living document that by the nature of projects has to be updated periodically. As new projects come on 
and become developed, we will consider adding these and we'll have a process by, by which we do that, which is outlined in chapter 12. Does anybody all from the RWMG want to add anything to that regarding projects? Okay. Um, also, large part of why we did not adopt the, the CABI plan um, back in May is because we were in the process of updating our disadvantaged communities needs um, assessment and, and doing outreach. Um, and the Sierra Fund was a big part of this, this process. Um, um, and basically we, we were able to weave insights, information and projects developed from that outreach process um, into the plan, all the different chapters. So it was a very comprehensive process, I think. And um, really kind of made it a plan overall and also helped it comply with the 2016 standards. Um, if you haven't looked at it already, the updated CABI Integrated Regional Water Management Plan can be downloaded at cabiregion.org. Um, if you go to the document library, you should be able to take a look at it. And it is um, actually, there's a link to it on the, the landing page when you get to the home page. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Nasa King and let her um, go through the schedule for the plan revision and adoption. Hello, everybody. And again, welcome today. I'm Nasa King with Nevada Irrigation District, and I'm part of the Regional Water Management Group. Um, we thought we would lay out this final piece of um, the plan update process and then submission and approval by the Department of Water Resources. Um, today, looking at the schedule that's in front of you, today is the public hearing. Um, we, our goal is to take action to adopt the plan today. If there are any final uh, revisions to make, we will make them in the next week. And then around the 11th, we would submit it to the Department of Water Resources. We've already consulted with them unofficially. It takes approximately 60 days after we submit this plan. They will do an internal review of the plan and then they have another 30 day public review process. Once that is completed, we would get um, the final plan back from the Department of Water Resources. Um, the plan at that point would be ready to release to the community and to the public. We will make it available on the CAPI website and we will invite all the stakeholders to then consider these resolution, um, resolutions of support for um, adoption of the CABI plan. And that's really the final step in the process for becoming one of the CABI members and be, becoming part of the CABI stakeholder group. Um, that takes us through late April into May we anticipate we would have a meeting sometime around May where we will consider the project list and also a funding opportunity that's before us. Um, there's approximately a million dollars that has been earmarked for CABI through the Mountain County's funding area, um, the existing funding that remains from Proposition 1. So we'll be looking at the funding requirements and evaluating our project list to come up with a good um, suite of projects we would propose and move forward. I think as Elena already mentioned, we do currently have a vacancy on the Regional Water Management Group. And also as per our governance chapter, we need to elect our officers for this year. So we would be undertaking those two tasks as well at the end of spring. Thank you. Thank you, Nisa. Okay, so um, just a couple notes about public comment as we move into that section of meeting. Um, if you sent a written comment by email or by letter, it will be added to the public record and posted on the CABI website after the meeting. Um, we, due to the volume of comments received, written uh, comments received, we will not be able to read all of those comments during this meeting. Um, but how those will be considered, those are being considered by the RWMG and are a matter of public record. Um, you can also make comments in the Zoom chat 
um, area using the chat function. You can also make verbal comments during the meeting. Um, there's a three minute uh, maximum to all verbal comments. And if you would like to speak during the meeting, please use the raise hand button under the reactions icon at the bottom on the Zoom screen. Um, our meeting moderators will call on you to speak. And if uh, I think that rather than you being able to unmute yourself, um, we will unmute you um, when it's your turn to speak. Um, it's just because of the number of people in the meeting, I think that's the best way to move forward. Um, so just please keep, keep the mute button held down unless you are speaking. And just remember that this is a public meeting. It is being recorded. And here we are. We are back at the meeting agenda. And um, just hand it over to Izzy Martin, who is going to begin the um, public comment section of the meeting. Thank you so much, Elena and Nasa, for laying out um, our objectives of the day and what we have in front of us as a regional water management group. This here public hearing is an opportunity for the public to speak if you want. We can, as, as uh, Elena laid out, there's a number of ways to get your comments to us. But if, to, if you choose to, to speak on the Zoom, we'd ask that you state your name, that you tell us if you represent an organization, and then make your comment. Again, we're trying to make sure that everyone gets a chance um, in to speak. So we're asking you to limit your comments to three minutes. If somebody has said th the things you wanted to say and they've said it powerfully, we'd invite you to say, I, I second the what, what Susie Jones said um, so that we can uh, uh, hear that and maybe move a little faster through the many comments I'm um, expecting. It's fabulous that we have so many people interested in what the Kasumnas American Bear Yuba Regional Water Management Group has been up to for seven years while we've been working on the plan. The, uh, the plan um, is the primary focus of the hearing, as people have mentioned. Um, anyway, at this particular moment, I would now like to open the public hearing. And um, I'm going to ask uh, the moderators to let me know who's in line first. I believe it's Carrie Monahan from the Sierra Fund. All right, well, thank you. Um, it is exciting to see how many people joined today. Um, I was uh, lucky enough to be a part of CABI starting back in 2005 when we were writing the proposal to form a CABI for our region uh, with Liz Mansfield and, and others. So it is amazing how far we've come and I'm really excited to um, get to the point where we have an updated plan and commend all of the hard work that went into getting this plan kind of up to the um, standard that it's at today. I did want to share that by being part of the early CABI meetings, I got to be part of some pretty powerful meetings where we set forth some ground rules for how CABI was going to be functional and um, in this region. And that, is, that included um, a consensus process, which gave everyone time um, to learn from each other and to make multiple benefit projects that uh, benefited from being interdisciplinary. And um, the agreement was that projects that did not reach consensus would not be included in the plan. And specifically, there were two types of projects that were not going to be included in the plan. And that included urban planning, because that was considered a rat's nest of issues that CABI didn't want to get stuck in. And the other was on-stream storage because it was completely divisive and didn't allow us to work well together. So I know that this isn't the meeting to select projects, but I really did want to share that, um, that institutional history. And thank you again for having this time for us all to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Monahan. Next, we'll hear from Jeff Litton. Thank you. Um, today, we're at a crossroads where the members of the stakeholders group will decide on the internet, uh, integrated regional water management plan, but it will affect actions that will be taken by our community for the following years. And the benefits and burdens of these actions will be felt for decades and centuries into the future. If you look at that short list of stakeholders, 
Please think about the individuals who will not vote in today's decision. There are no tribes represented in that list, even though the ancestral homeland and sacred burial grounds of the Nisanan Native Americans would be flooded by Centennial Dam, which is part of this water plan. I'd like to acknowledge that I'm speaking today from traditional Nisanan Native American land. Furthermore, the 24 families whose homes will be demolished and flooded behind the dam, they will not cast their vote either. What if it was your home? Southsider Water District is not at the table, even though 43,000 acres of agriculture are managed by their farmers being using Bear River water, much of that coming from the Yuba River. I've spent hours photographing their public records and calculating the data to see what happens if NID is allowed to divert 221,400 acre feet of water out of the Bear River, those farmers would have been left without water 13 of the previous 18 years. Only five out of the 18 years was there enough water for NID's vision for Centennial Dam of over allocating Bear River beyond sustainability. Past NID dammer Scott Miller said he would continue to take those farmers to court to make sure NID can keep taking water from farmers and selling it to developers on the valley floor. Centennial Dam does not measure how much extra water there is in the watershed. It only looks at how much can be legally stolen from farmers downstream. The silence of our farmers, our families, and our native tribe, that silence is deafening. Centennial Dam should be removed from the IRWMP today because there is not a voter consensus on the project, so it's up to the voters today to block it moving forward. The stakeholders have a duty to block Centennial because they will be judged by the community, the members of those organizations, and in time, surely by themselves. The, the South Yuba River Citizens League was founded on stopping dams to protect our river. American Rivers has said Bear River is the second most endangered river in America because of Centennial Dam, but surely the eight and a half miles of Bear River on the chopping block today are the most endangered eight and a half miles of river in our nation. Many of you voting today have not seen the section of Bear River at risk, uh, which is why I was hoping to share it in my background, but that's okay. Uh, I've made several films to take you there. Uh, if you do a YouTube search, you can uh, find it under Save Bear River. It's now known reservoirs release methane into the environment, which is 10 times more effective at warming our planet than carbon dioxide. California's climate is changing. Do we want to make it worse with Centennial Dam, or do we want to keep sequestering carbon dioxide through an eight and a half mile section of thriving forest? Nevada Irrigation District is entering into an age of moral recovery and hopefully away from their practice of placing non-disclosure agreements on our fellow citizens and stop reading the emails sent to their board members. There is a lot of money behind building a dam, and just like one rich farming corporation was able to influence water policy around the state and build a dam for its fields, major influences are still to this day coming after our rivers. Demand for water has reached our community and NID paid to be a part of a study showing how they can send Bear River water from Centennial Dam to Southern California. There is a study, oh, sorry. Your there, time is, 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 is up. Do okay, hear, can I, uh, just my last sentence then. 800,000 people visited the Yuba River last year because our rivers are an open air cathedral where all go to celebrate. We are river people, yet Centennial Dam would flood the Bear River Crossing, Bear River Campground, and eight and a half miles that people access for hiking, tubing, rafting, kayaking, fishing, gold panning, and more. Let us move to an era where we can protect our rivers, our families, our heritage, our culture, our agriculture, our, our changing climate. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Litton. Next, we have Sue Britting. After that will be Gavin Reiser and Diana Suarez. Hi. Sue Bruning with uh, California Native Plant Society. Um, I, I was actually a part of the first uh, CABI plan and have been following you from over here in El Dorado County for uh, a number of years. I kind of uh, backed, you know, dropped off the, the group and, and it, up to this point have been uh, very uh, positive and supportive of the work you've been doing. And so, uh, I appreciate all the dedication and, and the interest and the effort to work together with uh, folks to find places where you're aligned and then seek resources, funding to accomplish projects. So I think that has been something that's been very positive. But today I'm here to talk about um, how I think the plan that you uh, want to adopt today is broken. And it's broken you know, that by, by the fact that you have so many people here today talking about projects that they object to. So we just heard about Centennial Dam and um, I, along with eight other organizations and an individual that are concerned about the South Fork American River submitted a comment letter objecting 
to the inclusion of Alder Reservoir on your project list. Um, and so I, I'm not going to talk in any more detail about that, except to emphasize we are a group of people here in El Dorado County who were, I just, just, uh, it was an off chance that I looked at that project list and be and understood that um, El Dorado County Water Agency had submitted it as a project and that it actually had received consensus. This is a storage water project that's bigger than Centennial Dam and would affect the South Fork American River, uh, you know, dewatering down to minimum flow sections that are essentially free flowing right now. So, uh, but I'm gonna set that aside because what I wanna focus on is how your plan that you wanna adopt is broken. And it's broken in chapter 12 on the project approval, a uh, submission and approval process. And so um, I think if I understand correctly, be, in May, you had uh, some uh, revisions to your plan and between May and August, when you received uh, the project uh, application for Centennial Dam, um, after that acceptance of that application, then there was a revision made to the CABI plan to accommodate a new terminology called non-consensus. That is completely confusing to the external world. And I know that it's confusing to the people who have been CABI stakeholders in the past. What does it mean to be on a project list that your website says that these are proposals are aligned with the regional goals and objectives of the plan? That's what it states on your website. And then you go download the project list. But in fact, it, it, uh, it has to, a project on there that says non-consensus, and it's unclear what that means. Sue, I have, uh, that's your three minutes. Could you wrap up, please? Um, and so uh, there are places in there that, in, in terms of your chapter 12, that don't provide for transparency, doesn't encourage stakeholder participation in meetings about the projects. Uh, it's confusing. And, and because of that, that section should be rewritten. Um, I would advocate that that section be uh, rewritten so that non-consensus projects are not on the projects list. They're someplace else. There are projects in work or something. And that you actually commit to- I'm gonna need you to wrap your, your comments up. It's just that you need to commit to public engagement around those projects because this is an example of lack of public engagement around the projects. You have people coming to your meeting, proving a plan. There you go. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, the next speaker is Gavin Reiser. After that will be Diana Suarez, then Tracy Sheehan, and then Teresa Simsimon. Simsimon. So Gavin Reiser. All right. Um, my name is uh, Gavin Reiser. Uh, yeah, no worries. Um, I'm a uh, grad student uh, studying to be a nurse practitioner. I'm also the founder of Super Awesome Kayak Squad, which is a Facebook group uh, meant to organize uh, voters predominantly in California for boating. Um, but we have members from all over the country and the world. Uh, I'm also an avid outdoor enthusiast and a class five whitewater kayaker. And I came on today, um, I don't have a lot prepared because I am in grad school and have a lot of homework, um, but I just wanted to voice my concern for um, some of the projects here, specifically the um, water retainment, like the Centennial Dam and the one on uh, Alder Creek as well. Uh, both of these would be absolutely devastating to uh, recreation in the area, not just for whitewater kayaking, but you know, swimming and fishing and just people being able to enjoy the rivers as well. Um, we also know, uh, as some have said, that there are, are devastating environmental uh, consequences to projects like these. And I don't have you know, a lot of time to, or time to go into all the details of that, but we all, or at least somewhat familiar of the, the science behind these. Uh, in my opinion, dams are antiquated technologies. Um, we have other means that we can put our money towards that are effective, cheaper, and not as environmentally harmful. 
or maybe even environmentally beneficial uh, compared to these projects. And um, so, yeah, I just wanted to, um, to have that voiced out there. I know there was a lot of, I've, I've seen some friends that are logged in right now that will probably agree with me on this. And um, yeah, I just, I, I just can't imagine people thinking in, a, in an area where we're actually taking down dams uh, to try to restore habitat and, uh, you know, and, you know, seeing that dams are a very expensive thing that won't last very long because they'll eventually get filled in and become obsolete anyway. I, I just can't imagine people thinking that this is a good idea. So that's, uh, that's all I have to say. All right, thank you very much. And our next speaker is Diana Suarez. Hi, uh, good afternoon, Diana Suarez, friends of Bear River. I also wrote a letter that I hope everybody reads. It'll be on the CAVI website. After reading the CAVI Interregional Water Management Plan 2021 update, I am left with the realization that CAVI has failed Bear River and its watershed. Friends of Bear River has an active and inspirational vision for our living river, Tumim Seu, the river of prayers. First is an environmental water management plan. As the imbalance and dysfunction of integrated water management plans continues to plague local water agencies and irrigation districts, it becomes ever more important for the main use of water for the environment to have water rights, an ecological water budget, and a water flow plan as analyzed in a comprehensive Bear River watershed environment environmental water management plan. Questions of Aboriginal water rights and the inherent right of Bear River to exist are also worthy of in investigation. Second is a Bear River Park Ecological Preserve. The last 10 miles of publicly accessible Bear River below Rollins Reservoir and above Convy Reservoir is host to one of the last unspoiled stretches of mature riparian habitat and flowing water at elevations within the Sierra foothills that include old growth forest, unbroken oak woodland, and key wildlife migration corridors between Spenceville Wildlife Refuge, the American River Canyon, and wilderness areas. This river expanse includes suitable habitat for several threatened and endangered species. Bear River Park Preserve will be the ecological seed source for the recovery of native species when the two adjacent reservoirs come to the end of their usefulness and need to be removed and rehabilitated. Third is an indigenous reconciliation center located along Bear River on public land. A very large area downriver was promised by treaty as an Indian reservation for the Nisinan in 1851. This reservation pledge served to get the Indians to move off their lands along Bear River and although promised was never ratified by Congress resulting in more stolen land and another broken treaty. There will be an information kiosk, actual building, interpretive trail, native showcasing native lifeways. Fourth is fishery enhancement for native species. Bear River below Rollins Reservoir was a prime fishery with mature riparian habitat and appropriate cobble. It is well known and gets lots of use. There's an opportunity to use the environmental water management plan to work with other entities in the state of California to provide enhanced fishery habitat and a modified flow regime to approximate natural flows as well as riparian restoration projects. Fifth is a Bear River Watershed Beaver Sanctuary. In concert with Bear River Park Preserve, a beaver sanctuary within the Bear River Watershed would create opportunities to study the contributions that beavers make to the riverine ecology. This opportunity to study beavers will teach us more about how beaver activity enhances fisheries, increases groundwater storage, and adds to the diversity of the watershed. The beavers have come to heal the rivers. And finally, sixth is the Bear River Parkway recreational multi-use trail access points and rest stops. Much previous work has been accomplished on the concept of a region-wide recreational zone or parkway between Interstate 80 and Bear River, beginning with the intersection with Highway 20. Guys, you need to wrap up your comments, please. Yes. Um, one non-consensus project would wipe this all away. Please remove the Centennial Dam proposal from the CABI project list and read my letter on the website. Thank you. Thank you. We next have Tracy Sheehan followed by Teresa, Teresa Simsimian and then Jose Foray. Hi everyone, thank you for this opportunity to comment. My name is Tracy Shan and I'm with the Foothills Water Network. I know today that you're specifically looking to um, at chapters one through 12, which doesn't include 
uh, project adoption today. So I appreciate knowing that. Um, and I encourage you then to look at uh, chapters one through 12 and as what Sue Britting said, what's broken there. Um, I too knew that there was, uh, that CABI operates on project consensus or consensus, but that is not outlined anywhere that I could find in chapters one through 12. Instead, what I did find, I think in chapter four, is that CABI is now looking at water storage projects. So I have some specific requests for you today and suggestions, which I will follow up and submit a letter. Number one, wherever that is in chapter four that says that you are looking at water storage projects, you need to insert, and I request that you insert, Carrie Moynihan's background on the institutional memory and the decision not only to not have off-stream storage or on-stream storage included in the plan, but to also include the urban management pieces, especially in light of what's about to happen with urban water management plans. So number one, go back to that chapter and include that CABI has agreed to not have uh, to consider these plant those in a plan. That's number one. Number two, your chapters one through 12 never mention non-consensus projects. And the reason why is they're irrelevant to CABI. They're not relevant. You didn't come to consensus. They don't belong on a project list. Um, and so I, I'm going to say, if you need to do something on non-consensus, you're going to have to consider what you need to put in the chapters about it. But as far as I'm concerned, they're non-consensus. They're not covered in chapters one through 12. They don't exist. They're irrelevant. It can't be on a project plan or in a plan when it's not covered in chapters one through 12. Finally, I think you need to consider where do you put these projects when there's a living document? And I can appreciate that, you know, you don't want, we have institutional memory, you don't want to repeat projects over and over again. If you want to have a past projects list that includes non-consensus items, then so be it. But they don't belong as part of a living plan. Um, so I know that there'll be another meeting on the projects. And at that time, I will express my and the Foothills Water Network's opposition to having Centennial Dam listed as a non-consensus project because it's irrelevant as part of the CABI process. And second, I will suggest that the Alder Reservoir is also removed. And so in closing and comments, something else that Carrie mentioned, I think is super important for this group and look at how many people attended this meeting. They attended the meeting because of non-consensus projects being a lightning rod and this kind of stuff holds everyone up. You know, this is not the time or the political climate for us to bring non-consensus projects into this successful collaborative project. So I think everyone needs to think about that and, and thanks, sorry, I'm getting a little heated about that one. Thank you for all of your work, take care. Thank you, Ms. Sheehan. Teresa Sim Simeon is next, followed by Jose Foray, then Matthew Phillips, then Logan Smith. Teresa. Hi, um, thanks for the opportunity uh, to comment. My name is Teresa Simpson. I'm the California Stewardship uh, Director for American Whitewater. And I am just kind of introducing myself here um, as one of the stakeholders. Um, I would like to first off say that I uh, um, agree with Sue um, Britting and Tracy Sheehan's comments and let me get into mine. Um, American Whitewater is a national nonprofit river conserv conservation organization provided, founded in 1954. We have over 6,000 members and 100 locally based affiliate clubs comprised over 30,000 paddling members. A significant percentage of our members and affiliate clubs reside in or travel to California to enjoy the state's significant whitewater resources. We as an organization have engaged in key hydropower relicensing processes on the Yuba, Bear, Upper American River Project, and we have worked to preserve access points on the Kasume. The CABI Integrated Regional Whitewater Management Plan impacts over 300 miles of whitewater resources on the combined watersheds. Um, just as uh, information, an outdoor industry association study showed that residents 
of the third and fourth congressional districts where these watersheds reside will spend over $3.7 billion annually on recreation. Not surprisingly, water sports as they are now, meaning the rivers um, that exist now, not future in storage um, projects, um, are among the most popular outdoor sports. We are opposed to the inclusion of the proposals for Centennial Dam and the last minute inclusion of the Alder Reservoir project in the project list for the cabbie. These in-stream storage projects are costly and neither project has been developed with stakeholder holder collaboration, nor have they been subject to proper feasibility analysis. Understanding that the project list is a living document, we advocate for removing these non-consensus non projects until they have proper stakeholder, in, stakeholder engagement and they properly consider the impacts in, in feasibility studies needed for the CEQA process. Thanks for your time. Thank you very much, Ms. Simsimian. Simsimian. Next, Jose Foray. Uh, good afternoon, and thank you for the opportunity to participate in this uh, public meeting. I'm Joseph Four, Chairman of the Preservation Committee uh, with United Auburn Indian Community. Um, UAAC is pleased that CABI is making stronger efforts to engage tribal communities. Um, from the tri tribal perspective, knowledge and reestablishment of native plant communities and stu stewardship is critical to the health of California's rivers and overall ecology. We look forward to the con uh, to continue conversation with the Sierra Fund, American River Conservancy, and other tribal colleagues. Thank you for your consideration and working with us to re revitalize traditional ways and highlight the significance of Native American knowledge. Uh, we expect to, uh, that continued con uh, consultation will seriously consider and positive and negative effects of proposed projects. Thank you. Thank you, Joseph. I'm sorry, I didn't see the F. Next, we're gonna hear from Matthew Phillips. Yes, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, uh, I'm a, a lifelong uh, El Dorado County resident. Um, I'm a whitewater kayaker. And um, basically, I don't really have a whole lot to say um, besides I'm kind of overwhelmed with the amount of opposition um, that I've heard so far during this meeting. And, <coughs> excuse me. And um, basically, uh, I just am sort of outraged um, by these projects. And um, I just wanted to voice my concern, <clears throat> especially on the Alder Creek um, project, which I just find to be super sneaky. And um, a lot of people don't even know about this. And I find that to be um, of the utmost um, con concern. So um, I speak for many uh, friends and family members um, and just find that uh, this whole thing is very overwhelming. And to have this, uh, this meeting that no one really has heard about um, in, in general population and to see the amount of people that have logged in opposing it um, is to me an ind indicator that this is, um, this is wrong. And um, I just wanted to voice my opinion that um, I think it's, it's very corrupt and um, should not happen. That's about it. Thank you very much. Um, next we'll hear from Logan Smith. Hi, uh, yeah. Um, just like many others, I too am a whitewater kayaker and the South Fork American is a place that I call home. I grew up on that river. I you know, learned about life in that area and, you know, it's really concerning to me about how, I mean, there's so many participants here. I mean, we, it seems like we all disagree heavily with it. Um, and from my perspective and like on the side of the kayakers perspective, this region in general is one of the best whitewater areas in the world. And I think that our community would be losing a lot if this was taken away from us. Um, and 
I know I don't have very many facts and whatnot, but I think it would be very smart to heavily consider what would be missing if this all went underwater. Yeah, thank you. All right, thank you very much. Our next speaker will be Shelley Covert, followed by Axel Hoverkin. Uh, my apologies, this is Greg. I, um, I let uh, Axel, I unmuted Axel next. Can we switch the order? Sure, Axel then Shelley. I don't see Shelley's hand up, sorry. She, uh, yeah, she, pe some people have privately messaged me when they okay. wanna speak instead of putting their hand up. All right. Thank you all very much for the opportunity to speak. Good afternoon. My name is Axel Havorka. I am a student in Bend, Oregon and an avid whitewater kayaker. And I consider myself to be a next generation outdoor enthusiast. Many of the previous points that have been made in this meeting, I completely stand by as I um, strongly oppose any uh, man-made interference with the natural rivers that we are blessed with here in the state of California. I would like to take the, this time to focus on the South Fork of the American River. I first visited the South Fork of the American River when I was 14 years old and was amazed by the natural beauty and the whitewater recreation it offered. And not only the whitewater recreation, the South Fork of the American um, is a beautiful river and pretty much a dreamland for anyone who is interested in any kind of water recreation. Uh, basically, you have um, all classes of kayaking, uh, rafting, and uh, there's even some fishing opportunities on the river. My two favorite sections are called, uh, colloquially known as Golden Gate and Kyber section, which would be just downstream of the proposed um, Alder Creek uh, diversion. Um, in conclusion, I'd like to say that if this stretch of river was dewatered, it would be a great loss for all outdoor enthusiasts and the next generation of outdoor enthusiasts, especially as they will never get to experience this incredible river. Um, and I, I didn't even go into the economic implications it would have as it would draw away visitors from the area who normally come to support the local economy during the peak recreation season. I'd like to thank everyone for their time and uh, listening to my comment. Thank you, Axel. And it looks like the last person that has um, is, is in line is Shelly Covert. Would you like to speak, please? Hamakini, this is Shelly Covert with the Nevada City Rancheria Nisanan Tribe. And, um, you know, I've, I've had a on and off again relationship in CABI, um, spent a lot of years attending meetings and being involved, trying to get the tribal, our tribal voice, especially um, included. I have, you know, wondered, been in wonder actually, <laughs> um, at the relationship between our environmental organizations, um, our, our organizations who care about the, the white water, who care about fish, who care about the habitat, um, the tribal cultural concerns of um, keeping our waterways healthy in this horrible state that they're in compared to prior gold rush. Um, I have been proud at some of the CABI meetings because I find it incredible that, you know, the water districts and people with certain um, views of, you know, promoting more storage, more dams, um, being able to even be in the same room with people with such adverse um, points of view. And the consensus piece is what makes it work somehow. There are really good people behind the scenes, even um, who have opposing ideas as an organization to our tribal ethics and what we feel is right and wrong, that there can be, and I think it's because of personalities that, you know, the, the conversations can move forward. And that is because of the consensus. I, you know, there's not a lot of money here. The cabbie, Irwin has such a tiny pot of money to draw from compared to other regions in the state. And there, these programs to get funded are highly competitive for that money, obviously. Um, and then to have 
uh, you know, what, like what um, Tracy Sheenan had said to, I really echo what she says, to have something put on a project list that is not a consensus based project. I feel just sucks the air and the life out of all the work that has been done by people sitting in these rooms for hours and hours and hours. Um, it, it just, it doesn't feel good. And I feel that it's a direct assault on this, these years, decades. I mean, before I was involved, you know, um, it really puts it all at risk. And I, I just can't, say how I really have been proud of the the conversations that happen at these meetings. There are no fist fights, which I always find to be a positive thing. You know, people are beating each other up and the, the conversations progress in, if I could say, an adult manner. Um, and to, to have that consensus base, I believe, is so important. And so to, again, echo what uh, Tracy had said, I, I believe that's where this, the problem is, is that that really should be remain as it has been in the past, a consensus based project list. And um, at, at the very least, uh, I have so much more I could say, but I really believe that's where I should, um, you know, put my thoughts and voice today. So thank you very much. Thank you, Shelley. We have uh, Seema Khalsa next. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. Sorry, my phone still showed it. My computer still showed us muted. Um, I am not a kayaker. I am a swimmer and a river enjoyer. Um, my family has had a cabin on the American River as long as I can remember. Um, I've been going there since I was six years old and my family, um, you know, it's, it's just always been a part of me. Um, with that, when I moved to Alexandria, Virginia, I come every year to the El Dorado area so that rather than coming home for Christmas, we come home in the summer so that we can be on that El Dorado River on the Alder Creek side. So I was super um, concerned when I saw about this meeting happening because it wasn't something that I was aware of. Um, this is such a beautiful area. And um, like others have said, I'm definitely concerned about the area having um, water pulled and being dewatered and the environmental impact. And, you know, some of the things I read was about the fish and the frogs and the what have you. And, you know, I'd hate to see all of that potentially not studied enough before, um, before something happened. The environmental impact is, would be huge. Um, I, as I've been listening to people on the call, I agree with so many of the things that people have said about the lack of tribal input, including broken treaties, um, the lack of knowledge about this meeting and, and the fact that people are finding out about it yesterday and trying to be here. Um, I, I didn't have a chance to prepare comments. This is just kind of off the cuff, but I would like to know that there is a consensus and that people um, can come together. And um, so as other people have said, I'd love to know that these projects were not moved forward on at this point. Thank you, Seema. Our next speaker will be Wade Peak. And it looks like after that will be Shane Hanafi. Hi, um, my name is Wade Peak, and I'm a kayaker like a lot of you guys, but um, uh, I second Logan Smith. And I know that I don't know a lot of facts, but I do know that um, I do know that the, those sections have been a big part of uh, my family's history, and it would be, I'm, I, I've hoped that someday I'll, I'll be able to paddle those, and it'll be very disappointing if I am not be will not be able to. Thank you. All right, thank you. Next is Shane Hanafi. And then will be Jeff Venturi Venturino. Hi, um, thank you for the opportunity to speak. My name is Shane Hanafi. I'm the vice president of the Red Bud chapter of the California Native Plant Society. We're a statewide organization with 35 chapters dedicated to advocating uh, for the great native plants of California, underlined by sound scientific principles. 
I would like to ask that the consideration of the Centennial Dam be removed uh, as it is a non-consensus project. And I will be rep repeating these concerns at the upcoming meeting discussing the contents of the project list that was mentioned earlier. Uh, you've heard today already some wonderful comments from people who approach their opposition to the inclusion of the Centennial Dam from a wide array of perspectives, but I'm here to represent the perspective of the plant life that would be severely harmed by the construction of the dam, both in the area planned for inundation and downstream as life-giving waters diverted from their sustenance. Our river canyons are great centers of biodiversity, owing to the gradients and elevation, humidity, and soil substrate. And within the Bear River exists, uh, within, the, within the Bear River Canyon exists protected species such as Viburnum ellipticum, as well as unlisted yet locally rare plants such as disjunct populations of the usual coastal species Sedum radiatum and Amorpha californica, which is the only host plant of our state butterfly, the California dog face butterfly. If we lose Amorpha, we lose the butterfly and we find ourselves lacking another revered and iconic California species, much like the extinct one which still adorns our state flag, the California grizzly. If this biodiversity is lost, it will not and cannot return. And we find ourselves at a severe ecological disadvantage as it is this biodiversity, which is the ecosystemic hedging of vets against a rapidly changing climate. The ecosystem services provided by lost species can often be met by a different species in a truly biodiverse system, but we risk nearing the tipping point of cascading ecological failure the more we homogenize our species makeups via local extinctions and extinctions more broad as well. The crevices and weaves of the canyon harbor relic populations that cannot exist elsewhere, cannot be restored. Damage done to our river canyons represents a disproportionately high level of destruction to our resiliency. Uh, plants are the basis for biodiversity of all other creatures and their protection in turn protects all other living organisms, big and small and ourselves included. A system of low biodiversity requires more time, more energy, more money from all stakeholders in order to escape the worst of the effects. The benefits of increased water storage are short-term windfalls the number one, do not benefit the communities which end up providing these resources. And number two, represent an enormous ecological risk, a can kick to my generation and future generations to reckon with. As we've seen with the lingering effects of our history of mining, these consequences can be long reaching and devastating, continuing hundreds of years down the line. Uh, so thank you, that's all that I have. And I'll be speaking again at the future meeting. Thank you, Mr. Hanafi. Next is Jeff Venturino. Thank you, Izzy. Um, thank you, Shane. Um, thank you, Shelley. Thank you, so many people that spoke before me. Um, I'm a whitewater paddler um, and also a um, field biologist based out of Davis, California. Uh, if there's any background noise, it's because I'm at a field site because of the short notice of this meeting. Um, I'd like to echo uh, the sentiments previously stated about removing both the Centennial Dam and also the Alder Reservoir um, as non-consensus items. Um, I think it's hard to um, hard to not want to reiterate a lot of what's been said, but it's been said better than I can. Um, so I'll just add a few things. Um, <clears throat> the first being, um, I know that a lot of um, water projects are being um, looked at and considered um, as a potential to protect the ability to live in these uh, environments um, in the face of climate change. Um, and I recognize that's important. People need to drink water, um, irrigate their fields, et cetera. Um, and most of the people on the other sides of this issue are irrigators. Um, in this particular case, uh, and also um, pretty much across the state, um, additional in-stream or off-stream reservoirs don't seem to be the solution. Um, so to be pragmatic, um, just for evaporative loss reasons alone, um, uh, ecological impacts, I love to paddle. I mean, all of these things are important. Um, but the pragmatic solutions are not going to be um, business as it's being done. It isn't working now. It wasn't working in Oroville. Um, it's not working in the future. Um, and additionally, I just want to kind of reiterate a little bit of what's been said, but more plainly, um, that the economic value of these river systems is um, difficult to measure, um, but massive. Um, people traveling to paddle, to swim, to fish, to hike. Um, and that's not calculated um, well uh, in any of the mitigation strategies, um, et cetera. So there's a lot of energy in the room right now. I want to let that continue. Um, these people are here because um, they don't want to waste that energy on bad solutions that aren't solutions. Um, and, and I just wanted to say, you know, if, if everyone in this room were able to spend the, the energy that they're spending now looking for better fixes um, for 
uh, our climate crisis, uh, our environment. We're just going outside and, and paddling or going for a hike. Um, we'd all be a lot better off. So thank you for your time. Um, and thanks to everyone who's already spoken. Thank you very much. Next we'll hear from Benjamin Hoxie. Benjamin Hoxie. Okay. Hello. Hello. Hello, you can hear me? Yes. Thank Hi you. There. My name is Ben. Uh, I am a Westmore kayaker and an employee of the paddle shop in, in the area here in Auburn. And uh, I can tell you firsthand that the, uh, the flow of, of money comes in uh, to the economy here when, when that section of the river is flowing. And I think uh, as a steward of the river um, and, you know, be enthusiasts, people that, that love, you know, what they're doing out here, we need to protect the area and we need to protect our natural resources. And there's a major movement in California to remove projects like this. So I think that um, putting one in would be a step in the wrong direction. I think a lot of other people would agree with me on that. Um, hopefully uh, my words get heard and um, I, I thank you all for being here and, uh, and supporting and removing uh, projects like this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Lucas Healy. Hello. Uh, I'm a lifelong resident of Nevada County or uh, El Dorado County and recently moved to Nevada County. Uh, and I would just like to reiterate everything that's already been said, the environmental uh, and the economic impact of the Alder Creek Reservoir and the Centennial Dam uh, are huge and I don't think they're being properly considered. I, like a lot of other members have already said this, uh, not many people are aware of this and I think the more people become aware, the more people are going to be against this. Uh, this goes against, these two projects go against uh, the direction that everything has been moving uh, for, for, for as long as I can remember. Uh, so yeah, I don't have anything to add other than, than as a lifelong resident, it's shocking that these are being considered and uh, there's a million reasons why they should be removed from the project list. Uh, and that's all. I'm sorry, Mr. Healy, you're breaking up a little bit. Okay, let's go on. Um, Mr. Chuck, Tra or Chuck Travis. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Uh, I'm a lifelong resident of a cabin owner on, along the South Fork of the American River. It was built by my grandfather uh, back in the early 30s. And I grew up there in these rivers and fished them and kayaked and tubed them and the joy that they bring to so many people, it's Highway 50, for example, in the South Fork, almost every turnout is filled with people that park and walk down and enjoy these rivers. And they have no idea what is being considered here, which I find totally in today's environmentally sensitive world that we live in, that these considerations, you know, seems to me like they've been brought out of the 30s, you know, when we didn't care about the environment. And we have global warming, we should be caring about the environment, and we should be protecting those few natural resources that are still available to us and the whole public. I think these are bad ideas. 
and I think they should be removed from the plan. And that's the Alder Creek Reservoir especially, but not but the others are just as bad. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Travis. Um, is there anybody else that has not spoken that would like to speak as part of this public hearing? Don't have a gavel, so I'm gonna just if give everybody a minute to unpause. You see, there's two people with hands up. A uh, Gavin Reeser, who's actually and been hand up for a while, and it's already not... spoken. He's already spoken. Oh, thank you. And then an Aiden McManus just oh, raised my hand. Just went up. So Aiden McManus, and then Cameron Hoffman. Aiden McManus, are you still there? Took his hand down, I think. Um, okay. I'm I see. Hang on. Here we go. Here we go. After after him will be Cameron, and then it looks like. Um, See when you, yeah, okay. I, I'm trying to keep track of the hand raising. That's not an actual hand raise. Um, it's people saying they're raising their hand. So I'll I'll try to add that to the list. Um, so who's is, uh, unmuted now? Go ahead, please. Aiden, are you on? All right, I will, um, un here we go, he was- okay, Our next person wait. will be Elizabeth Olson, who has messaged that she is raising her hand after the, um, so Elizabeth Olson. Okay, hang on. All right, can you all hear me? Yes. Hi there, so uh, resident here of the district, uh, environmental educator and whitewater boater, I have stood on the banks of the South Fork of the American River for years, teaching our next generation about the tragedies of the past and the poor decisions that were made both environmentally and towards our indigenous uh, members of our, our society. And what I'm hearing today is a repetition of those atrocities. Um, the proposal has not been given um, enough of a highlight for the public to know about it. Uh, as far as myself and most of the voters, I know we learned about it late last night. Um, pushing it through without consensus feels like a bad faith action. Hearing how the Nisman tribe has been disenfranchised from having a voice in this decision is also an echo to the mistakes of the past. If you look at the history of what happened when we dammed the Stanislaus River in the 70s, the loss of the whole economy for an area, the loss of a, a natural gem. Um, I think that we need to, to pump the brakes on this project. We need to let the public know what's being considered here because the implications are far greater than even a hundred years from now. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. Next, Cameron Hoffman. Hi there, can you guys hear me? Yes, thank you. Hi there, uh, my name's Cameron. Um, I, <clears throat> excuse me, I live in um, Salt Lake City. Uh, I am a whitewater kayaker. Um, I, I spent several years in Coloma in the Auburn area, paddling on the oh, South Fork of the American. Um, and they helped shape me as an individual and as a human. Um, I'm sure that many other people, probably quite a few in this chat can, uh, attest and agree with that. Um, I'd like to bring up the fact that people travel from not only all over the country, but um, all over the world. In fact, I'm specifically talking about international raft guides who come to the area and uh, stimulate the local economy. Um, and again, people from all over the country, myself included, I, I travel to the area um, annually to come kayak and, um, and again, to support the local economy and uh, uh, in my experience, recreationalists and kayakers, especially, we don't always get heard and our voice isn't always held um, as the highest uh, priority. Um, but nonetheless, I think that we should be taken into consideration and the perhaps smaller points that I just brought up regarding the economy and, and recreation in the area um, should, be should perhaps be given a little bit more thought and consideration. Thank you. That's all. Thank you, Cameron Hoffman. 
All right. Has anybody not had a chance to speak with us today to share your views on the CABI plan? Aiden McManus, uh, was un I was unsuccessful, able, unable to unmute him. Let me try one more time. Okay, we'll be hearing from Aiden McManus. If any of else of you think you might want to be speaking, let us know. Mr. Mc I'm sorry to give you a pronoun. Aiden McManus. I'm not hearing Aiden McManus speaking. So can anybody else hear him? Am I frozen? Nope. We can't hear him. I'd like to invite him to, I don't know why it says I'm unmuted. Mr. Mc, Aiden McManus is saying. Yeah, I would suggest that for some reason we can't hear Aiden McManus. So if if they he or she or they have a comment that they would like to make, um, please put it in the chat. Yes, um, and of course, uh, Aiden McManus could call in on a, on the phone um, number, which is part of the Zoom invitation. Um, so we'll wait for that. In the meantime, um, has anybody um, just joined um, that wants to speak that has not yet had an opportunity to speak with us? Okay, um, I hear from, I see that Otis Wallace is saying, I've been patiently waiting by phone. Would you like to speak, uh, Otis Wallen? I'm gonna see if I can. I'm uh, having difficulty unmuting him. Uh, Otis, if you're on the phone, I believe you need to uh, do a star uh, six to unmute yourself or a star nine, one of the two. Yeah, Elena told us at the beginning of the call. I mean, at the beginning of the hearing. Star six on the phone. Star six, Otis or Aiden. Star six on the phone. Yeah, Otis, I'm sorry, I cannot mute you. I, it, it does not allow me. So you have to do it. You have to initiate it on your end, I believe, or we're having a glitch here. You're on, Otis. Yes, hopefully, uh, hopefully you can hear. Hello, Otis. Uh, yeah, Otis Wallen here. Yeah, I was the president of the American River Watershed Institute, uh, still am. And as such, I represented one of the stakeholders on this table where we wrote the original plan. As you uh, recall, it, preceding the, or the Earl Wimps were the watershed groups. This was where CalFed wanted watershed groups to be in consensus with all the stakeholders to recommend projects to CalFed. They wisely decided to go more regional and the Irwin process was, was devised. It likewise, DWR was asking to see a bona fide stakeholder group be in consensus about their uh, process and about their recommendations for projects. So consensus was what it was all about. If the word consensus is no longer in chapters one through 12, I advise you to go back and make sure it's there. DWR was not interested in hearing from consensus groups about minority views, majority views, supermajority views, two thirds vote, consensus minus one. They were interested in consensus. When we wrote the plan, it was all about consensus. When El Dorado, Water, uh, El Dorado County Water Agency demanded that both Alder and Auburn Dam be listed as projects and that on-stream storage be part of the plan, we as stakeholders simply looked at them and said, 
go ahead and advocate for those yourself. This venue is about consensus. And trust us, you will never get consensus around on-stream storage, off-stream storage. Get over it. Elder Ottawa County Water Agency said, we're going to leave the table. And basically everyone said, fine. If you can't come up with projects you think are in consensus and in alignment with our plan, then go home. If you want to come up with consensus projects to recommend, do so. So if you've eliminated consensus from your process descriptions, and if you are proposing some kind of gradation from minority view, majority view, supermajority, whatever, in your project lists, you have strayed far, far away from the original intention of CalFed, of the watershed groups, of DWR, and of the early writers of the first uh, iteration of the urban uh, for Cabby. And I really hope that you will reconsider and state it right out front, make it simple for everyone. And this, um, yeah, I find this very disconcerting. Uh, I personally don't want to spend a lot of time dogging what CABI does because it's no longer a consensus group and, the, and you get into all sorts of mischief. So don't waste your time, don't waste our time. Go back to the original intention. Thank you for uh, your patience in a, in a view that represents a little bit of history. I regret that my friends Alan Everhart and Bill Center have both passed away and are unable to uh, make these comments with the uh, determination and emotion that they would like to bring to the table. Thank you, Otis. Next, we're going to hear from Catherine McDuffie. I would just like to say that, like so many people, I have spent my whole life on the American River, and in particular, Alder Creek. It, it's just a part of who I am. It's part of my DNA. And when I hear what um, these projects are, will completely destroy that community that we have lived in along Alder Creek for all these years, um, but we have another more specific problem in that we rely on well water. And what will this do to our well? This will dry up our well. So that's just one little issue among much bigger issues, but there are a lot of unintended, unintended consequences for this. Um, so, uh, but thank you for having the meeting. Thank you very much for taking the time to share your opinion with us, Catherine McDuffie. Um, we've heard from a lot of people. I wonder if anybody else that hasn't spoken has an opera wants to speak to the, uh, the plan, the CABI plan before us today. Um, I see Joe Kut Cutter has uh, raised his hand. Joe Kutcher. Um, yes, can you hear me? Yes. Right, so I've lived in the South Fork of the American drainage uh, roughly 11, 12 years from Strawberry all the way down to Swansboro. So I've hiked probably every tributary to the South Fork um, and I'm familiar with all the diversions, all the reservoirs, um, and all the tragedies that came along with them. So as a member of the community that's connected to not only kayakers, I'm a whitewater kayaker, but a snowboarder. Um, also, I would like to say, like no one, no one in the community from Strawberry to Kybers to Placerville wants this to happen in any way. Or even aware that it's happening. And in fact, most of the people in Strawberry were not even aware that it was happening, um, which is super sad. It feels like they're trying to sneak one in on us, you know? And not only that, but after exploring all of these drainages, the sad part is, is like, it's really piped up there. Like from Union Valley, all the way from Loon Creek Complex to like Alder. Um, I mean, it's all piped, like everything goes into the South Fork and there's rarely anything left for us anyway. And it's not just as a kayaker, like how about a hiking, um, a hiking perspective? Like 
most of these creeks that are not tapped have California newt, um, turkeys, deer, mountain lion, bear, good fishing. And the ones that have been tapped, even like alder, where it's just piped a little below that, that diversion is terrible. It looks completely different and it's not such a beautiful environment anymore. And it's just sad. So um, I don't have much else to say other than that. But if you walk around and you hike the tributaries, you can see the healthy ones and you can see what used to be probably the most beautiful watershed on the planet. Um, it brought me here. I moved here from the Southeast for it. And I will never leave this region because of how beautiful it is. And I feel like there's a lot of people like this. So there's no possible way that this should be done. And I don't think we should let it be done. And that's all I have to say. Thank you very much, Joe. Again, it looks like uh, you don't see anybody with their hands raised. It doesn't seem like anybody new has joined up. Oh, Aiden McManus, there's his hand again. Can we hear you this time, Aiden? Let's listen with our special Zoom ears. Aiden? Go ahead, Aiden. You're, you should be able to speak. Hmm. I just think we must be having some technical difficulty with Aiden's um, audio. I'm not, and I don't know what it is. Sorry, Aiden. I would again suggest that you make your comment in the chat screen or by email. Um, and I, people are giving helpful suggestions about check your volume, Aiden, or stars. Well, it's not over. That's it. Was that you, Aiden? Did we hear you for a minute? Star six. Logan Smith hears you, but I don't. I heard him for one second. I would like to suggest that we call it into the public hearing, but take ourselves off for a bio break for a few minutes. And if when we come back, Aiden can get through, we could hear that before we close the public hearing and then begin comment. And I'd like to see if the rest of the regional water management group agrees that after an hour and a half, we could all get up and walk around and come back um, just in case that helps Aiden get in. Is that okay with the rest of the water management group? Yes, I agree. Sure, can you give us a restart time, please? Yeah, let's start again at 2.35. Okay, see you then. All right, it looks like some people are coming back in. I'm gonna wait until 2.35 to really start the meeting again. All right, um, just before we took that short break, um, we at, gave a last opportunity for anybody that wanted to testify during the public hearing portion of this to get a chance to do so. Um, I am not saying that anybody has uh, wants to speak that hasn't yet had a chance to speak. So I think we might be done with the public hearing portion of this meeting. And if so, I'd like to turn the meeting back over to Elena DeLacy, our facilitator. Thank you, Izzy. So I'm going to once again bring up the screen um, with our agenda. Um, so we are on item four, a uh, re regional water management group discussion and action. Um, so I would like to invite my fellow regional water management group members to weigh in on, um, I don't know, what action we'd like to take. 
Oh, Izzy, you're raising your hand. You have to. I can't hear you. Using my actual hand. Um, <laughs> there was a couple of things I heard I wanted to clarify for people. Um, somebody mentioned in the chat that when you go on the CABI website and notice that uh, you, you uh, check on the projects um, button there, those aren't maybe pie in the sky projects that somebody's put on a list. Those are actual projects that have come through CABI. Um, more than uh, $15 million have come through the CABI vehicle since we started for projects like replacing pipes and um, in Placerville and the intertie between Auburn and, um, I mean, Grass Valley and uh, NID and CWA. Those are the sorts of projects that you'll see on the CABI website. Um, and I just wanted to clarify that. None, none of the things that are on this list that we've been talking about here today, the project list, um, none of, most of those have, are, are just brand new projects that people have not, have not come through the CABI uh, funding um, portal. Um, I also wanted to say um, I'd like to, uh, I, I really heard people's comments about consensus. Don't think that we didn't talk about that. I would say we've talked about that for around four years now at these meetings. And I think your input on that subject was very, very helpful to me um, to, to hear and um, this commitment to consensus that I heard from the public. And I, I would very much like to, um, make sure that we look again at chapter four, uh, I mean, sorry, at uh, chapter 12 and the other parts of this uh, thing to make sure that we've really not given up consensus as our, as our decision-making tool. Um, and that's, I think, the primary thing I, I wanted to share. Um, I, I think it's a good idea for us to um, really re double down on, uh, in our commitment to consensus. Agreed. Um, I, I do feel that um, throughout this whole process of updating the plan, um, we've, we have stayed true to that um, consensus basis. Um, and I feel like it is still in the plan. Um, I don't think we changed the language um, substantially at all in those sections where it does refer to consensus. So. I will definitely take a look. I think we as the RWM take a look, a closer look at those sections that were pointed out by some of the commenters. I also wanted to um, clarify some terms because I, I heard some members of the public referring to stakeholders. And there are there in the um, for the purposes of CABI in our governance, if you were to read our governance chapter. There are two bodies of the kind of decision-making process in CABI. One is the stakeholder group, or the SG is the, the acronym that we've been using. There is the regional water management group, this body that is leading this meeting right now. The regional water management group is, is basically selected by the stakeholder group. And to become a member of the stakeholder group, you must first adopt through a resolution of support the CABI Integrated Regional Water Management Plan. Um, so to kind of have a, um, I guess, a, a portion of the decision-making process and to be a part of that, you, you must first have a good faith effort in, in participating in the process and adopting the resolution and so on and so forth. Um, there are members of the public that can attend those CABI RWMG meetings and stakeholder group meetings. But in order to have a, a vote, so to speak, uh, those organizations or agencies must first adopt the resolution of support. I just wanted to clarify those terms um, for those who may not be familiar with uh, the distinctions um, that are in there. And um, certainly so all public comments are going to be considered during the, our process of um, updating the plan, considering projects, things like that. It's, it's, it's also important to recognize that, that um, in order to um, include a project in the plan, uh, and other RWMG members may want to correct me if I'm wrong, but it's my understanding that if you want to include your 
project into the plan, you must also have adopted the resolution of support for the plan. So that's another thing to kind of um, just clarify. Izzy, we can't hear you. Uh, yeah, if I could clarify your clarification, that means that um, the projects that we have in the plan or don't have in the plan at this particular moment, um, they won't, if, if the organization that proposed that plan doesn't then sign on to this plan, their project will be taken out of this plan. That's correct. Um. Kyle? Uh, yeah, so I, I just want to make uh, make everybody aware that this that for our for this plan uh, something did did change uh, of significance, and I think it relates directly with all the comments that we've had here today. Is that the plan itself was kind of uncoupled from the project list, so, so it, it's associated with it, but it's it's a kind of a standalone document and allows us to. Uh, add projects without having to go back to DWR and get a full plan approval. Um, so, and, and we will be addressing projects specifically at a later date. So, uh, and I think that's, and that's clearly the bulk of this meeting was to discuss a couple projects, which, which seemed very controversial. But what we, what I think we want to focus on today is, is the plan itself, not the projects so much. And I'm sure we'll hear a lot more about, uh, especially a couple of projects that were addressed today, um, it, when we do have a project related meeting on this. So, um, so in regards to that, I, I think we didn't really hear a lot of significant issues directed at the plan. They were all mostly directed at the project list. So I think that, that you know, we're going to be consideration for this Plan moving forward is one step. The other step will be discussion of projects at at a later date when we get to that that portion of things. I did hear some significant comments that were interesting to me about the um, after we've read that governance chapter until we're all blind after seven years about consensus and I would like to take another look at those. So I think that was completely about the, the, the chapters and the governance and how we make decisions. That's very specifically about our plan. And if it's not clear that consensus is what we're always striving for in our plan, I think we need to double down on the consensus is what we're always striving for. Um, and the plan itself, the content of the plan, um, we worked on for years and years, lots of uh, the organizations that have stakeholders in this group contributed. And the substance of that we were we think is pretty good, but I'm always ready to take another look um, to make sure that what we've been working on really reflects that commitment to consensus. And I'm um, imagining the water board, um, I mean, the water agency representatives, the four on this, um, and the nonprofits that we together would like very much to uh, clarify that consensus is our top. Right, and um, you know, I'd just like to add too that, you know, th this is a, the RWM was put together, uh, you know, based upon state requirements in order to gain funding for projects and any projects, although, you know, some may be on the list that may not be, be non-consensus would, would uh, without a doubt not, not reach the, uh, not reach the level to to gain funding um, uh, through this group. I think it's a, I think it's a, an acknowledgement that there are projects out there that will not reach consensus. Uh, but I think it's good to be open and honest about what projects are out there and exist. And there will be uh, NEPA sequel processes um, and public forums and opportunities to address those projects once they're developed. I don't think either Alder or Centennial has even reached a feasibility study stage. So um, there, there would still have to be a lot of discussion in regards to those projects, but I think it is good to note that they, they do exist within our region and that, uh, and that 
Uh, we really appreciate everybody's input on those things. And if they move along further, there should be ample opportunity for further public engagement on them. Can I add to um, what Kyle said? I don't, I just want to make sure under, everyone understands the process. So, and you guys, R, other RWMG members can um, clarify, please, please do. But um, the way I, my understanding of how it's going to work is we, CABI has about a million dollars remaining for grant funding opportunities that the state hasn't identified what the projects are that they intend to, to fund. And so once that, once that's um, provided to CABI, then we would go through the project list and evaluate those projects that meet DWR's needs for the grant. And then, um, and then the, the, the ones that would get funded are the ones that meet the criteria. And, um, and so that limits many of these projects out of the list. Um, That's correct, Heather. I, I, that's my understanding as well. I would also like to add that the, the bundle of money sitting on the table, almost a million dollars that's from Prop 1, um, it, a portion of that must be dedicated to meet the needs of disadvantaged communities and tribal interests. And um, it's a, a required minimum portion. It seems to me that we've uh, all of the regional water management group members have supported um, the introduction of tribally led projects. We um, have spent uh, time and effort um, making sure that those, the, the, those opportunities, those doors were opened. We're still in the process of reaching out to small water providers, another named uh, potential disadvantaged community. Um, purveyor uh, that could get funding from this, this pot of money, the Prop 1 pot of money that's available. So um, again, there's discrete actual real money available that would be um, re required by law to be spent in a certain way. Um, and those meetings, are that's, that's where we'll be really deciding which projects go into that bundle and sent to the state. So I'd like to ask the my fellow RWMG members um, if there's any further discussion on potential actions today um, for either adopting the plan, amending the plan, rejecting the plan at this time. I would like to suggest that we adopt the plan, but contingent on reviewing this language on consensus one last time making sure we're using the correct version of everything and, and just walk through there. I, I want to have the uh, people watching this understand how much work the eight of us, well, now seven, because one of our members was ill and had to go off for, for personal reasons, had to leave. But um, I, I, I want to I, I have you understand how important that is. So I think a few of us will go through this, try to see where that feels broken if there's a way to, to, to strengthen that. Um, I would like to have us adopt the plan, um, but allow us to amend in language that strengthens the consensus based nature of our decision making. I agree. And I believe that we should um, take a look at the comments that, that, that harken back to the beginning of CABI when CABI was formed regarding um, um, land use uh, municipal or land use planning type of projects and also um, water storage projects. Um, as Carrie Monahan had mentioned in the beginning of the public comment period, I think those, those comments really need to be taken into consideration. And I know we have discussed this over and over again at the RWMG meetings, um, but it, it's worthy of further consideration. I know there is language in the plan, 
still. Um, we did not remove the language that referred to um, those types of projects, um, as I recall. And um, but maybe we need to, you know, look at where that language currently is. Maybe we need to move it to a different section. Um, but yeah, I, I, I completely um, concur with you, Izzy. I, I think we need to adopt the plan, as, uh, but amend it um, contingent on those, those comments. Hi, El Elena and Izzy. Um, this is Tracy Eden Bishop. I agree that um, we should go back and, and make sure we're really clear about um, consensus in the governance chapter. Um, so I, I, I don't know if we're at a, a seconding here or, <laughs> or whether other people have other comments. Well, I, yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll second that, this is Kyle Erickson. Well, and of course, consensus means that that yeah, we are all we all have to agree even to this this little bit. So it'd be good to hear from the people that haven't yet spoken. There's only a couple of you. Ashley or Nisa. I'd like to clarify Izzy's motion. So we are um, moving to adopt the plan contingent on potential edits to the project list at another date. Am I understanding that correctly? Yes, I'm um, going with the formula that we're not making a decision on the project list today. We're making a decision on the plan, the contents of the plan, um, and that we will be having a meeting in the future to discuss the project list. Um, but between now and next week, uh, we would like to take one last look at the consensus language in the different places that exist in the, both the governance chapter and the project selection chapter. Um, and we can uh, send that language with e to each other. We've, I think, now given the direction of what, what way it would go. And um, we would then put those final words in the plan, which would then be sent forward to DWR and also posted on our website, correct? Correct. Yep. Uh, I think the only person we haven't heard from is what Heather is. Um, I agree with Izzy and Tracy and um, all of you. I think one thing I, I was listening to was um, the project selection process, chapter 12. I think someone mentioned that they wanted more clear understanding of what non-consensus mean, but I think that's probably going to play out when we work through it in the governance chapter. So I think that's something we'll have to address as well. All right. Seems like we have consensus on the consensus review. So our, our vote is, uh, is to amend the plan as discussed. And um, once the plan is amended, then we'll adopt the plan and send to Department of Water Resources for review. I think we've also clarified for the public that we will have a meeting about the project list. I see people have put their addresses in um, and we will let you know about that. I also think the um, uh, there is obviously a need to discuss some of the issues that people are here talking about that are they're presenting to us. Again, mimicking many conversations that we've had on our regional water management group. Our plan does call for public forums on these sorts of issues, particularly um, the, the role of storage, um, and whether there is a role for storage in a resilient water plan or not. And I think it would be useful to, we have language in our plan calling for that conversation to happen in public. And I, for one, would like to see us set a date on the calendar for that sometime um, in the next several months so that we can bring that out into the public conversation. 
Agreed. Yes, I definitely agree. I just I wanted to clarify um, the motion. So we're the motion is to adopt the plan with potential edits to chapter four as it relates to consensus. Is that not, not for I think we're going to look through the document <coughs> for the, for these these issues. It's in governance certainly, and it's in project selection. Okay. And for, for RWMG members information, just so you know, if you do a quick word search of our plan as drafted, consensus as a word is mentioned 50 times throughout the plan. Thank you, Ashley. I couldn't do that because I'm sharing my screen. <laughs> uh, I, I, I just received an email from the general manager of El Dorado County Water Agency, and he has asked me that we will go ahead and pull the Alder project from the project list. Great, thank you, Kyle. So, um, so I think that will, should alleviate a bunch of concerns, hopefully. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah. Certainly, certainly relieves certainly. the concern of ours, <laughs> of American River Conservancy. Yep, uh, the project mm -hmm. will move on, but it'll go through the standard process. It just uh, well, will not be on the cabbie list at this time. Okay. Well, there you have it. Um, well, I would like to um, thank you, Kyle, for giving us that up to the minute news bulletin. Just got the email a minute ago. <clears throat> I just want also to say to all of my fellow regional water management group members over the last four years, um, including Rachel Hutchinson, who was part of the update prior to Ashley Overhouse coming on. Um, it's It's been um, a long road and a long journey, but I, I just appreciate all of you and the amount of time and the amount of energy and work that you've all put into this. I know, especially from us, from uh, the nonprofit organization perspective, we don't have dedicated funding for, for me to spend my time on this. I know Izzy and Ashley, you do not either. And so we're, you know, we're doing this sometimes as volunteers um, to represent our watersheds that we, we protect. And um, so, so I, I just, I also want to express this, you know, um, also as a member of the public, you know, I, I live in this watershed, I live in the American River watershed and I really appreciate the Cosumnes River watershed. And so um, I also want to put it out there to members of the public and others who are on the call that we do have an opening on the regional water management group. Um, we, we are looking for another non-governmental organization um, representative to um, indicate interest in serving on the regional water management group. It's a wonderful opportunity to get involved in um, water issues, um, it would be wonderful if we could get a tribal representative um, um, or a representative from the Cosumnes River watershed or Bear River watershed, but um, I'm just putting it out there um, as a matter of record, um, there is an opening, so. And I'll, I'll follow that up, Elena, by saying that um, the hard work of consensus building, we've been, uh, We've had our nose to the grindstone on that. And so I think our, our next review of the plan to make sure in this next couple of days that it's really, it comes through clearly as being the path forward um, is gonna be meaningful. But the work we do together on the Regional Water Management Group has been countless hours. And um, I think we all really appreciate what everyone brings to this table. So thanks to everyone and also to everyone that joined us for the meeting. So I'm go, go ahead, Izzy. I was just gonna say, since we're not, we don't vote really, we just say, well, sounds like we're all in consensus. Mm -hmm. um, 400 years of the Quaker thing in, in me. Can't help but say stuff like, oh, it sounds like we're at consensus and um, <laughs> If we so, are, so our our potential our action is to amend the plan, um, 
for the good of the order. That is our action today. Nasa. Um, so I have just been asked to follow suit and in order to get the group moving down the road more effectively that Nevada Irrigation District is also going to remove Centennial from the project list at this time so that the process can proceed. Thank you. <laughs> That's good news. And that, my friends, is what democracy can look like if you really try hard and you stay on respect and gratitude. Thank you, Mesa. Thank you, Kyle, for the, for the up-to-date um, breaking news. Thank you. <laughs> we are but messengers, let me tell you. Yeah, we, we are just basically <laughs> staff members, so. We're all just messengers here, you guys. Yeah. We, uh, it always is a process, and I really want to thank the public for um, speaking to us with your hearts today. Yes. Here, thank here. You. Okay. Well, um, I guess it's time to adjourn the meeting. All right. Thank you, everyone. We really appreciate all your input. Thank you. RWMG members, I think we're going to stay on the call. Is that correct? Just yeah, for a couple I think minutes. That would be a good idea. Okay. Wrap things up. Okay, at this time, we will ask the members of the public to um, leave the call and the meeting is adjourned. Thank you. And we're only just going to be wrap, figuring out the details of how to send each other emails and what the deadlines are. We're not, we're not going to undo anything we just did. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we need to figure out logistics of amending this plan now. <laughs> I think it's, it's going to be very boring. <laughs> I think it's a really simple idea to um, just look at that language again, because hearing people that we know have watched this process, I mean, Otis was the director at the PCWA for decades. Um, if, they, if it's not clear to them, then we just need to try that one last time to clarify. And now with this, these, two, these two new decisions that have been made, it's much easier to clarify, I believe. Yes, absolutely. So who wants to take the first stab at it? I mean, I'll volunteer. Okay. Be so you all raise your hands. <laughs> Maybe me and Nasa, we've ridden in on, on this ride together a few times, or me and uh, uh, Tracy, she's been there, I think, in this. Should be a water agency person since I'm on the e Rose side. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, um, Izzy, I cannot help out right now, just based on my schedule. I'm sorry about that. I can just, I can whip something together and send it to y'all. And um, I don't know that there's a, I don't know exactly where this, this might be, but I will try to go through it and with, um, as if I knew nothing, eyeballs and um, see if I can spot this, in, this lack of clarity. I'm happy to work with you on it too. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Why, why stop now? I know, really. So yeah. close. And I'll do something immediately. I'll work on it tomorrow and get it out by the end of the day. The day. And Nasa, I can send it to you first. Oh, and maybe you can play with it and then send it on. Okay. Um, one, one more thing about the meeting recording. I'm assuming the recording will be posted on the CAVI website, Greg? Or um yes whatever you guys want to do okay i also i also just i had um told you guys that i would take notes um i have four pages of just kind of bulleted summary um statements for each speaker if that helps but if the recording um can suffice as the public record or for the public record then i won't do anything further with my notes I'd like a copy of your notes. Okay, just I'll uh, distribute to the RWMG. It sounds great. I think any member of the public want that, you know, I mean, well, these are your notes that we didn't necessarily, just in case there's you know, typos and stuff, but I think we want to make this everything transparent, every comment we got put on the website, this Zoom recording on the website, everything. So I I also took notes and um, it, can I just, well, are, are you just going to scan your, your notes in Tracy 
Or are you uh, going no, to? I was going to have someone type them up for me, and then maybe we can combine if you'd like. Okay. Do you mind having them type them, and then I'll just add to yours? Is that okay? Yeah, that's great. Okay, great. Thank you. Seems like we've made the decision. I'll get, we wanted to get this done by next week, right? I think we can make that deadline. Yep. Yep. And for those people who there were um, one or two, I think one travel project came in after our deadline that we can um, be looking at when we do the real project list to add for the, for the grant, for the yeah. DWR. So I think our next meeting, we need to talk about that process of writing, you know, that putting that next step together of the new bundle and all the fun administrative work that that represents. It's fun, huh, Nesa? So. <laughs> well, at, at least we already have the current solicitation and they haven't actually started the period yet of actually trying to put stuff together. So it gives us a little bit more time. We have Kyle, Kyle's our bureaucrat whisperer. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't need to set up another RWMG meeting at this time. I guess we'll wait to, to look at what you come up with, um, Izzy and, and Nesa. And then if there are any any glitches, then we'll set something up. Is that Does that sound good? Otherwise, we would have Jason just go ahead and submit the plan to DWR. Is that where we're at? Right. Yeah, take whatever changes we make, put those on our website, but also send it to DWR. Yeah, make a notation of the changes so the public knows. Yeah, maybe an errata kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think as long as Centennial and Alder are off, I think we're good for the most part. Do we have to respond to these uh, letters that came in? No, it's vital that they be part of the public record, but it's not, it's not required by law to respond to each comment, just like we didn't respond to each comment as people spoke. Um, our job is to listen and, and read all of the comments and listen to all of the comments. And I think we've have all made a good effort to do that. But so I received comments separately directly to me. Um, and, you know, typically we we have to respond right as an agency. So I'm wondering if I just maybe for send her an email after we address the comments um, through this process and just let her know the, that they were addressed here. Right. We, we, we would say that, you know, all the comments, you know, basically we received were associated with Centennial Dam Project and Alder, Alder really. I don't think we had anything else. Uh, and that the agencies that put those on the list decided to remove those from the project list so that so those comments were addressed. I don't, I don't think those are the only comments we had. I think that we specifically had the consensus um, comment that we need to address as well within the government chapter and in the in the um, project review process. Heather, I think you can, I don't know what your, your water agency protocols are that are required, but because of the, the unique nature of this particular publicly created body, um, and we don't have staff and we don't have a budget, um, it's, it's not necessarily that you, we don't all have to use, uh, we need to put all those project, all those comments together in one common pile. If they sent it to you, you need to make sure you send it to all of us so that we have it in that common. Everybody shares their public comments with everybody um, in, as part of this process. So if yeah, you can share I did. It with, with all of us, yeah. Yeah, so I did. I sent it to all of you right before the meeting happened. I only received one, so. That's fine. I'm just saying that this, I want that recording to reflect that anybody that got a comment on this in through however it came to them we want to make sure that that comment gets transported into the public uh, comment um, record okay that's really our only obligation and and will Greg be doing that putting all that stuff up on the website I'll work with yeah, Greg. I can do that mm -hmm. I need to uh, go through and scrub it of, you know, personal emails and identifying information like phone numbers or that kind of thing. But yes, I will. Okay. Thank you, Greg. You have just been great at this whole thing. Yeah. Thank you, Greg. You're welcome. Thanks, Greg. Appreciate it. To you as well. It was a uh, good job. We got to hear a lot of uh, 
impassioned people today. So. <laughs> yeah, so there is a bunch of email addresses that got put into the chat. Um, and I, I will need to add those to the Google group listserv. And so you said you were going to scrub personal information, Greg. Oh, that's only from the comments. I mean, things that are posted publicly, I'm, I don't think people would like to have their personal email information or phone numbers put on a public record. Um, Got but it. That, that will that's and that won't affect the comments. The chat will is recorded and is part of this meeting, and so okay. none of that will go away. Okay, great. Yeah, okay. we can take. We will go through the chats and probably should take those as well and include them as part of the public record somehow or another. Okay. So Greg will grab the um, those email addresses and I guess hand them to whoever maintains our Google. Is that you? That's Get it me. To Elena. And um, then we'll have we'll have a good list for all these people that want to be involved with us. Yes. Yeah. Got them out of the woodwork. <laughs> yes, I, that's what I said in my earlier meeting. The silver lining is <coughs> publicity brought people out to come tell us what they want, and that's it's the bottom line of what we're supposed to be doing. So yay, we did it. Well, Great. hopefully, hopefully they'll continue to be more interested in cabby i mean we haven't had a lot of participation um, yeah. from the public and it's maybe a wake-up call that they need to be more involved well, and to describe to them how to be that they we don't have individual members so um they might want to be a member of american river conservancy or circle or they might be a you know a big supporter of the water district that they live in there's different ways to, to bring your voice to cabby one thing well, i know can I, uh, one thing I noticed in the comments related to this um, is that a lot of people didn't hear about this meeting and which means that we did not publicize it well enough. Um, we of course sent it out to all of the lists that we have and we put it on the website and we did post it in the Auburn, Auburn Journal. But I think that we really do need to broaden our, um, our publication of, of our public meetings or the Cabbage public meetings. I guess we could actually issue a press release when DWR actually uh, approves our plan. We could maybe issue a press release and do a little press thing, get the local newspaper or the local radio stations to cover that there's this new plan and um, this collaborative, you know, let's, we, we can PR the uh, DWR approval and maybe people will care when we start handing out money. That's what everybody's been waiting the whole time. I really want money. That's what RWM stands for, right? Yeah. Well, I think people have various interests. Money is one of them. Yeah. But I'm saying it really gets people together when you're funding projects. So the next couple of meetings should be nice and exciting. Yeah. And fun, really. Money to give away. Well, I think it's interesting that we went from, you know, according to the chat, corrupt to kind of heroes in about less than five minutes. Yeah. He, that's, oh. that's a good thing. We're getting you and NASA caps special blue caps, I mean, uh, cakes. <laughs> I was just keeping my management praise throughout the meeting, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sounds good, well, we made it through. <laughs> All right, everybody. All right, thank, thank you. you. All right, bye. 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 bye.